So here we are with Paul Hargreaves. Paul, if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing here today. Uh, hello everybody, my name is Paul Hargreaves. I'm a researcher and lecturer now at uh, the Barony and Crichton campuses of SRUC. And my background and inf uh, interests are with soil, uh, soil quality and how that affects what's grown uh, there, especially forages for dairy cows. Uh, at the moment, this experiment here is a small plot experiment, uh, part of an EU funded project, where we're looking at some more kind of novel uh, mixtures uh, against uh, some more conventional uh, lays uh, for uh, grassland and other species. So behind us, we've got a repeated block experiment uh, which has got uh, four treatments in it. We've got ryegrass and red clover. Ryegrass, red clover with fertilizer, bagged fertilizer applied. And then we've got red clover and chicory. And the final one is red clover and tonic plantain. And we're interested to see what the yields are like from this, the quality of that for grazing and or uh, silage preparation but also we're interested in what happens with the rooting material and how that affects the microbial population within the soil and how that uh, affects the greenhouse gases that are produced. Uh, because we know that uh, nitrous oxide is an important greenhouse gas, especially after carbon dioxide, and it's got a bigger uh, reflective value, so it's a more important as far as the way it um, uh, keeps the heat in so uh, it's uh, important that we find out whether we can reduce nitrous oxide with different mixtures within the swords and so far we've uh, seen some slightly positive uh, um, uh, results from that especially with the chicory and the red clover which is reduced the nitrous oxide emissions uh, from the plots in comparison with the other varieties. However, what we found is that the yield, especially the dry matter yields from the chicory red clover is uh, not uh, as good as the other species mixtures we've got. So some pluses and some minuses there. So the results you're finding so far, obviously preliminary at the minute, um, was that in line with what you expected? Or? Um, as far as growth was concerned, maybe not. I was hoping a lot for a lot more from the chicory. Initially last year when it was growing, it was our number one bestseller and really looking very healthy. Above ground biomass was uh, very impressive. But when we looked at the dry matter content, there was a lot of water there and I think a lot of fleshy leaves. So that was slightly disappointing. As far as the greenhouse gases uh, are concerned, this really is new. Uh, territory that we're looking at here so anything we come out with is is <laughs> is new and we, we we can't really say whether we expect it or not what we're hoping is some of these mixtures will reduce the greenhouse gas emissions so they can be used as part of a, a reduction of greenhouse gas across the farm really and you mentioned some had a uh, bagged fertilizer on it we're obviously in an interesting time for fertilizer uh, what do you think the future is regarding fertilisation of grass, crops, whatever? Well, at the moment, with the fertiliser prices only going in one direction, then I think really that uh, the farming community, the conventional farming community, has really got to start looking at the application of bag fertiliser and thinking, how much do I need to apply? Doing more calculations of offtake from your plots, yes, it's more... Uh, detailed work it's more spreadsheets and working out formulas but if you can save your money then that's uh, that can only be an advantage in the long run again uh, uh, i know that uh, there's uh, sometimes a bit of a, a resistance to uh, what uh, the organic community are doing but if you can include leguminous species and you know clover is one of those in your sward and retain it in the sward then I think uh, that should be then taken into account in trying to reduce your bag fertilizer use. And again, if you're growing things in rotation, if you're thinking of growing a leguminous crop, 
just think about not what your advantage you're getting for that particular year of not maybe adding as much bagged fertilizer to that but what advantages you get in the year afterwards in reducing your bag fertilizer needs as well perfect well thank you very much paul appreciate your time uh, good to hear what's happening thank you as well as plots set aside for research we also have grass and crop plots set out for education here at sruc barony i'm going to pass you on to one of our nc students drew to tell you more about them drew what are you thinking about this plot well jake uh, this has been the best plot so far as we've measured it with the uh, grass measure <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's been the best one so far, number seven. We're on the move. Uh, I see it's a good length of crop. There's plenty of bulk of it. Uh, that'll feed the cows this winter. 